Hello everyone, welcome to video 26 of chapter 3. In this video, we um, study chapter 3.7 and the topic is a redundant system. So we will look at the following situations. In the system of constraints, there might be redundant equations. This can happen at um, several um, levels. So it could be that one or more equation could be a linear combination of the others, which means um, you can remove it and without changing um, the constraints. And another possibility would be during the process of adding artificial variables, you could uh, introduce some redundant equations. Okay, so um, in principle, such equation should be removed or ignored because uh, it's useless there. But uh, it might not be so easy to spot it because it's kind of a hiding. Okay, so we want to build in the algorithm a way to detect these redundant equations and work with it. Let's have some discussions. So um, after we add artificial variables to a LP problem in standard form in stage one, it could happen that after some pivoting, um, the W is zero at a basic solution. So it has reached the minimum. But then at the same time, I see that some artificial variables remain as basic variables. So what does this mean? Let's consider a situation um, such that equation number i um, still contains um, xk, which is an artificial variable, as a basic variable. Then I can write out the i's equation as following. So here I put a star on the coefficient a to mean that is the coefficient at some um, pivoting step, not the original a, they're modified. Okay, so I'll have this equation and in particular I'll have this term um, and xk. So let's recall um, the definition of the w. W is defined as the sum of all the artificial variables, right? M meaning adding all, all the x up, including xk. So, also, um, we also sh say that this is the situation where w, uh, the minimum is found, so it's zero at this basic solution. So, an xk needs to be zero if it is still a basic variable, right? And then that means if xk is zero, and we know for the basic solution xk equal exactly to the right-hand side, bi. Mm -hmm. So um, one would conclude that in this case, the bi must be zero, because otherwise it's not possible. Okay, so if this happens, we want to say that this is a sign of possible redundancy. You need to do some more work before you can conclude. So let's take a look. Okay, let's look into more details when this happens. So if this happens, then W is zero and you still have XK as a... a basic variable in the i-th equation, then you look at all the coefficients a and you find that if for some j, a i j star is not zero. So I want to say that it doesn't have to be positive, it just it has to be non-zero because you cannot pivot here if this is zero. So if that is the case, then you can pivot at this xj in this equation and then um, replace xk with xj as the basic variable. 
Now, what will happen if you do this pivoting? Well, you know, bi has to be zero on this equation because of what we just discussed that, right? Then that means the constant column will not change. That means the value of w will not change after you perform the pivoting. w will still be zero, which is its minimum. If after you have done this step, for some reason, you still have some artificial variable in the basic variable set, then you can continue the step one and two of the process until you have removed all the artificial variables in the basic variable set. And then if uh, during this process, we shall get in, and we shall end in the situation that is all the coefficients a, a's are zero. Mm -hmm. That means then you can't pivot and exchange um, the um, basic variables, remove the artificial variables from the basic variable. If you have all of these, then what does it mean? Well, that means we have discovered a redundancy because Basically, that equation it just says 0 equals 0, right? So if that shall happen, then we can just neglect, or in principle, we'll remove it, but we, we just let it stay in the tableau, and we'll completely neglect this row. And then we continue in our computation. We move to stage 2 to minimize z. Okay, so um, after all this discussion, uh, let's um, do a summary of our algorithm. The algorithm involves multiple steps. So, first step, we add artificial variables as needed, and then we define w to be the sum of all the artificial variables, and then we express w in terms of the original variables. Okay, so this step can be done in LP Assistant by just clicking. It will do automatically. Step two, using simplex method and minimize this W here. Carrying out the pivoting process until um, you have reached the minimum. And now two situations can happen here. Um, if now W minimum you found shall be strictly bigger than zero, then you can stop the algorithm and you conclude that the original LP problem is not feasible. Otherwise, um, you have found the W min is zero. In this case, there are still two situations. So, part A. If there are no artificial variables in the basic variable set, then the original LP problem is now in the canonical form. Then we can conclude stage one and then proceed to stage two, and we will solve um, the minimization of Z using the simplex method. Otherwise, if some of the artificial variables are still in the basic variable set, then we will use the pivoting process that we just talked about to replace them. Okay, and you can pivot, and and wherever whenever you have a coefficient a that is not zero. Okay, and then and a couple of things can happen here. You might discover some redundant equation. If that shall happen, um, we in principle remove it, but in practice we just neglect that row. And uh, if the redundancy is not discovered, and then you will manage to put the original problem in the canonical form. Once this is done, then you conclude stage one and you proceed to stage two, and you solve the minimization problem of Z using the simplex algorithm, okay? So um, all these um, discussion talk um, might be a bit abstract if we um, don't see some concrete examples. 
So um, in the next video, we will go through two examples with um, two slightly different scenario, and then we'll see this algorithm in action. Okay, so hope this is useful and you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.